Did you ever conduct an experiment in school where you started off with one theory, then that experiment turned that one theory completely on its head? What about a social interaction? Did you worry about everything that could go wrong in that social interaction? Then that event actually turned out to be a fantastic learning experience. To make little changes into big ones, it may all start with subscribing. We have probably all conducted some sort of experiment in our life, whether it was at school, for work, or maybe even socially. Experiments are designed to test out a theory to see the plausibility of that theory and then analyze the results to see if the experiment has backed it up or if the results have proved something different. The same thing applies to behavioral experiments. They are designed to test out whether our fears, anxieties and worries are really justified or if there is another outcome that we didn't even think about. And this is where this social experiment comes in. The principles can be applied to any situation to enable a wider perspective without completely throwing yourself in the deep end and expecting to be an Olympian swimmer. So let's get to it. And what better location to begin this experiment than in a place we've all gone to at one point in time? The grocery store. <laughs> and especially in this day and age of certain illnesses going around, going to the grocery store does actually cause of a lot of anxiety for many people. But is it really justified? In last week's episode, How to Test Your Anxiety Realistically, Starting the Social Experiment, we covered the main steps to a behavioural experiment. Now, let's put that into action. Perhaps you feel anxious when going to, to buy your groceries. You tend to avoid it and to shop online whenever possible. You perhaps worry that when you speak to the cashier that your mind will go blank or you will make a mistake and get embarrassed. You may perhaps worry that the people in line behind you will make negative judgments about your purchases and that you don't know what you are doing if it takes you longer to pay or to stack your groceries. Out of 10, how would you rate your anxiety if these thoughts were going through your mind? Right, so now we have the trigger situation and the thoughts that crop up in regards to that situation. We are now ready to start the experiment. Keep in mind, I'm using the grocery store as a very generic example here. Let's break this down. What exactly are the thoughts and predictions that crop up when thinking about going to the store? Specifically, what do you think will happen? What images do you have about that situation? Perhaps you might be worried that the cashier will ask you a basic question and you won't be able to answer. Perhaps you are worried that you will freeze up first and then make a mistake. You might be concerned what the cashier will think or that the cashier or people behind you will get impatient if you take too long. As mentioned before, how anxious do you feel from these worries, rating out of 10? In this situation, you may feel anxious out of a 7 or 8 out of 10. Right, what can you do to test these thoughts out? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> take a deep breath and go to the grocery store. Select some items you want and talk to the cashier. Now, this part is one of the most crucial parts. What do you need to look for to confirm or disconfirm your thoughts? Can you respond to the cashier without freezing? Are there any objective signs the cashier thinks you have made a mistake? Do people behind you pay attention to what you buy? Are they even telling you to hurry up? So, what happened? What clear evidence did you collect from the situation? Stick to the facts. Perhaps the cashier asked you about your day. Were you able to answer without freezing or stammering? Was the cashier rude? Or did it appear that the cashier didn't mind making small talk while you sorted out your groceries? Perhaps those after you also joined in the conversation, or they were just focused on what they were doing. From this, what conclusions follows from your results? 
How can you keep this new information in mind and how can you find more opportunities to test your predictions? From this situation, you could surmise that your initial predictions were not quite on point. You were actually able to talk without freezing, even though you still felt anxious. People do not seem to be overly focused on you. Perhaps your initial theory was that you expected something bad to occur that would be embarrassing, and that didn't happen. Or even if it did happen, like someone got impatient with you, did you perhaps surprise yourself on how you responded and that their impatience didn't cause you to run away? And even though you felt anxious, you still went to the store, got your items and came out relatively unscathed. Now, in order to keep this in mind for next time, so you keep things in perspective even though you felt anxious, you might put a reminder note on your grocery bag so you remember this next time you go shopping. And finally, you can test this simple experiment out again by next week just going to the grocery store. In this first experiment, we covered overestimating the probability of your worries coming true. In many cases, if we think there is even a 1% chance of a social catastrophe, we will still feel anxious. People with anxiety may have a very narrow range of what they think other people will accept and what they think they can cope with. You may feel like you are walking a tightrope of what is socially acceptable and if you put a foot wrong it will be a disaster. This puts you under a lot of stress and pressure when you are having a social interaction, even if it is just talking on the phone. Part of this experiment is to test whether the costs of making mistakes is really as bad as we think. By testing the cost of our fears, we may learn there is more leeway than we expect in social situations. We may find that we can put a foot wrong at times, and that the consequences may not be as disastrous as we think. Learning this can really ease the pressure and stress in social interactions. Let's take the same situation again and test it out even more by seeing the consequences if you did freeze for a moment. The last time it went okay, but perhaps you're still concerned about the consequences if you did something out of place. How can you find more opportunities to test out what might happen if you made a mistake? Perhaps you may choose to deliberately freeze and then make a mistake on purpose to see how the cashier will react. It's not about testing the cashier per se, but it's just letting you know that mistakes may not be the end of the world. Are there any objective signs the cashier thinks that the mistake was a big deal? Like making a comment about you being weird? Or does the cashier laugh at you directly after you speak while she is still looking at you? Does the cashier make fun of you to the other customers? So, what's the results this time around? Well, perhaps a cashier asked about your day. You froze on purpose for a few seconds. She didn't seem to react to that and just waited for you to say something else. So, you say, I'm having a good weekend so far, even though it is Wednesday. The cashier laughed a little bit, but she was smiling at you. Perhaps she even has a little joke as well. I'm thinking about the weekend too. It can't come soon enough. Then she just keeps talking about other things. You finished paying, the cashier just moved on and asked the next person how their day was. She didn't make any extra comments and the cashier didn't seem to care when you froze. Of course, this is always all well and good as even though you made a mistake, the consequences weren't dire. And I know, sometimes anxiety may lead you to not think logically, then make a mistake which consequences are more impactful. Which is why aiming to reduce anxiety in the first place enables you to logically approach a situation and perhaps be less likely to make a mistake. However, even if you do make a mistake, could you learn from it? Could it make you stronger? Better equipped for next time? 
Do you think that taking that risk actually helped you to realistically increase social knowledge? Rounding back to the beginning, how has your experiment changed your initial theory on social situations? That even if you do make a mistake, is it something you can learn from? And even if people do think you're a little bit weird, does that really matter in the grand scheme of things? And how do we put all of this into perspective for our situation without constantly condemning ourselves? Join me next week on how we can tackle any situation with more confidence. Let me know in the comments what social interactions you would choose to test your predictions out and what your main concern is around that. Talk to you soon.